News at 5. Now, Hurricane Dorian hits the Bahamas and is now being called the strongest hurricane in modern history. We have a warning from authorities. And the death toll continues to rise after a mass shooting in West Texas. The plea from local law enforcement. Plus, out of her own tragedy, a Mississippi woman is on a mission to take care of those who wear the badge. We'll hear from one of the families impacted. Hello and thank you for spending the weekend with me. I'm Chelsea Jones. Topping our news at 5, there are reports of heavy damage, but so far no loss of life from powerful Hurricane Dorian, which made landfall today in the Bahamas. The National Hurricane Center in Miami said it hit with maximum sustained winds of 185 miles per hour. NBC's Morgan Chesky reports from Nassau. We are here in Nassau, Bahamas, just outside the emergency management headquarters where the prime minister just finished speaking, opening by saying this is the saddest day he's ever had to address his people. And that's because they're seeing the most powerful hurricane they've seen here in recent history, Hurricane Dorian, roaring ashore in Abaco Islands with winds upwards of 180 to 200 mile an hour gusts. And right now we know that the scene there is dire. This, um, the ocean waves are crashing on the shoreline, um, winds are howling like we've never, ever experienced before. He described Abaco Island as water being pushed inland anywhere from 18 to 22 feet of storm surge in certain areas. It is too late now for people to evacuate from there or in the adjacent island of Grand Bahama. Right now, the only plan is to hunker down and weather out this storm, which looks to be incredibly powerful. But at this point in time, dire situation in the northernmost islands of the Bahamas that look to be hit by Dorian for the next 24 hours or so as this slow-moving storm continues to churn through this area. We'll send it back to you. Now, while Hurricane Dorian's track has changed, the danger remains. Officials along a large portion of the southeast and the president are urging people to still prepare for the hurricane, even though it appears it might shift east and may not make landfall in Florida. With top wind gusts over 200 miles per hour, Dorian is a powerful Category 5 hurricane that will bring tremendous amounts of rain to the east coast in the days ahead. The National Hurricane Center now says Dorian is the strongest hurricane in modern records for for the northwestern Bahamas. Now, seven people are dead and at least 22 more are injured after a shooting in West Texas. Authorities say the manhunt ended here in a gun battle outside of a movie theater in Odessa where police shot and killed the suspect. Authorities say it started when troopers attempted to pull over the suspect in Midland. Instead of stopping, the driver pointed a rifle and started firing. Police say the gunman drove on the streets and the highway, spraying bullets randomly at residents and motorists. He then hijacked a postal truck shooting at people as he made his way into Odessa. The gunman has not been identified, only described as a white male in his 30s. Well, I'm heartbroken by the crying of the people of the state of Texas. I'm tired of the dying of the people of the state of Texas. Too many Texans are in mourning. Too many Texans have lost their lives. The status quo in Texas is unacceptable, and action is needed. Three police officers are among the 21 injured. Law enforcement officials say FBI resources from offices in Dallas, San Antonio, and El Paso will assist in the investigation. Well, her mission is a very personal one. A Mississippi woman created a nonprofit geared towards helping family members of first responders that have been severely injured or killed. One of those families is right here in the Arklamis, and NBC 10's Anna McAllister has the story. Just a few months ago, the group of people behind this glass window were strangers. Yeah, we're friends. We're family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are family. Uh, you're my son from another mother. Unexpected life circumstances brought the Moak and Mackle families together, and they have law enforcement in common. I had uh, wondered, what do you do? What do you do to help a family? How do you, how do you help them during that time of mourning? Little did she know, she would soon be a mourning mother herself. I wish it hadn't have been him, but I know there's a reason for everything. 
Moke's son, Zach, a Brookhaven police officer, was killed in the line of duty last September. Zach was trying to save his fellow officer in a shootout, but both fell victim. It was from that Warriors of the Badge was born. At the time of death, of the uh, loss of an officer, or if one is critically injured, we will provide financial aid to that family. One of those families benefiting, Concordia Parish Deputy Walter Mackles. He was shot in a standoff in Vidalia back in July. Warriors of the Badge, I mean, um, very new, but they are doing absolute great things. Though nothing will replace the loss of Moke's son, she hopes Warriors of the Badge will help the families of first responders when life takes a turn for the worst. Reporting in Concordia Parish, Anna McAllister, NBC10, your local news leader. What a great story. Warriors of the Badge is a nonprofit that accepts donations and holds local events to raise money. So if you're interested in learning more, you can head to our website, myarchlimus.com. Well, cowboys and cowgirls were some were competing for some serious cash in the Cotton Stakes Classic today. The Western-like atmosphere brought competitors from all over the South to the Ike Hamilton Expo Center to prove their skills as the best in cutting. Now, horse cutting is a sport that demonstrates a horse's athleticism and the rider's ability to get the horse to run a herd of cattle. These horses uh, takes a long time to train one, and it takes uh, uh, a lot of money to go on the road and compete. You know, I think to show your horse in this particular class is, I didn't look, but I think we're charging 1850 to show a horse. The event is expected to bring up to $2 million in revenue to the surrounding area. There are several different levels from riders that are beginner to advance, and the next horse cutting event will be in February. Brian? Well, good thing it was endorsed, because even though it is technically meteorological uh, fall now, we are still seeing those hot temperatures across the Arkham. This is coming all the details coming up when NBC 10 News at 5 continues. Good evening, everyone. Breaking news tonight. Lester Holt. Are you afraid Iran is playing with fire? What's it like to see them here celebrated as heroes? This is what it means to be American. We've had a lot of great the most people. trusted TV news anchor in America. That's nightly news. I'm Lester Holt. Join us every Wednesday at 12.30 for Tracking the Tropics, a digital weekly report on MyArklamist.com that'll keep you safe this hurricane season. Tracking the Tropics, Wednesday at 12.30 on MyArklamist.com. The final days to get a great deal on a new Toyota are here. Save on the last of the 2019s while there's still time. Guys, I have three seconds left. Qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2019 Tundra Special Edition. Toyota, let's go places. I was running errands on a Saturday. I was in a car wreck. I just got off the night shift when I got in a wreck. It was a Sunday when I called Morris Ford, and he got me $115,000. Injured in a car wreck on the weekend? I have attorneys standing by ready to help you now. CashNetUSA.com, man. I help when money's tight. If approved, you may get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. Ha, ha. Apply now at CashNetUSA.com. Money's on the way with CashNet USA. People are really excited about Toyota's national clearance event. Congrats. Get $3,000 customer cash or qualified buyers get 0% APR for 60 months on a new 2019 Highlander. Toyota, let's go places. The Animal House is your local pet store. Cypress Street, West Monroe. BC 10 News at 5 continues. The U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs says its facilities have been confused about the VA's policies on religious symbols. So the VA recently came out with revised instructions that the agency says will protect the religious freedoms of veterans and their families. Jesse Turner reports. The majority of the people in the military are of faith. They believe in a, in, in a religion. Christians, Muslims, Jews, and those of other faiths all serve our country in the armed forces. You see the Bible, you see this Quran, you may see a Torah. Talib Sharif is an Air Force veteran and a Muslim. I wanted to practice that, and of course it wasn't easy having a place to pray. And the Heritage Foundation says it's not easy for Christians either. They say at some VA facilities, you can't find a Bible. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs says its facilities have been confused about its policies on religious symbols. I would say people were interpreting it differently. I mean, this is a separation of church and state. 
So obviously government organizations, agencies, and institutions have to be very careful with that. VA Secretary Robert Wilkie recently issued revised instructions that the agency says will protect the religious freedom of veterans and their families. Wilkie says the VA facilities can display copies of religious texts instead of forcing veterans and their families to bring their own. But now the atheist Freedom From Religion Foundation is not happy. They wrote to Secretary Wilkie arguing the VA should keep its facilities free from government endorsed religion. Sharif says he has spent a lot of time at VA facilities and never saw anyone or anything denied on a religious basis. But he says he understands the importance of the government not showing a preference. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. A look at your full forecast is next. You're watching NBC 10 News at 5. Start your mornings with NBC 10 News today. Preparing you and your kids for the day with the bus stop forecast, showing you how to plan.